We're here with the UFC's number eight in the UFC women's flyweight, Roxanne Madaferi. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Thank you for um, being so patient with me, for indulging me too. Um, just to establish that history, how and why did you start training jiu-jitsu? Uh, I started training because I really wanted to do a martial art. You know, I saw the Power Rangers and I wanted to be strong and, you know, beat up the bad guys. And, you know, I just fell in love with the idea of martial arts, you know, um, be righteous. And, and I, I loved it. I did karate and jujitsu. Um, I got into judo and my judo friends introduced me to jujitsu. So that's how it started. Nice. Which Power Ranger were you? I don't know. I didn't really have a favorite. <laughs> I, I liked them all. Nice. Okay. So you said, so from karate to judo to jujitsu. So how did you start training jujitsu? How did, did, did that same friend? Did that yeah, my team? judo buddy. So I hurt my back actually. And I couldn't take the falls anymore of judo, you know, being flipped and also the twisting. So my friend said, hey, jujitsu is already on the ground and give it a try. And I was very resistant at first, but then I finally succumbed and, and tried it and for some reason I could do that you know I had to be careful but you know I just started doing jujitsu instead right but well, how's your back now I mean, it's great man I it plagued me for like a decade but my physical trainer Lorenzo Pavlica helped me strengthen you know a lot of areas the glutes and the lower back and a lot of everything so I I just needed that strengthening from somebody who knew what he was doing and I'm great now I can I feel great oh wow I'm taking pointers yeah it's amazing how about MMA? How did you transition? What got you started? I um, really loved jujitsu and I wanted more and more challenges, right? Like the, the heroes in anime are always searching for the higher challenge. So I thought, what's the higher challenge? And um, one day I saw a girl, Laura DeAugust, um, who I competed with in the Naga grappling tournaments. She had an MMA fight and I watched her and I thought, I could beat her doing that. You know, like that's the higher challenge. That's it. Eureka! So I, I decided to do MMA. That, that's amazing. You're such an inspiration. Um, so did you do any jiu-jitsu competitions, just, just grappling competitions, aside from Naga? Did you do any IBJJF competitions? When was the IBJJF made or founded? Because I think when I was like in the year 2001, I was just doing Grappler's Quest and Naga. That was pretty much it. Right. In, just, you know, just Massachusetts grappling. and New Jersey. No, yeah. those are my only options, really. Oh, yeah, that's true. They were probably mostly just in the, the Bra Brazil Mundials. Back oh, probably. Then. then I moved to Japan for eight years. And when I came back, there were all these, you know, everything evolved. You know, nice. I came back in 2013. Yeah, so how, what was this, the decision? How was the decision you made moving to Japan and studying Japanese? Uh, I love Japanese, the language, the way it sounded, and I loved the martial arts culture of Japan and anime. So I decided that I wanted to make that my second language and do something cool with it. Nice. Are you still fluent? Do you get to practice? It's really, really, really hard. You know, I know that if you don't use it, you lose it. So I try to write a blog. I try to read my friends' stuff on social media. I have like a phone date with my with one of my friends, Mako, uh, in Japan for half an hour every Sunday. I feel I still feel like it's you know kind of slipping a little bit, but the more anime I watch, you know, it refreshes my mind. And then I go to Japan once a year for vacation. So I've managed to keep it up like decent, you know, that's it's awesome. really hard though. It takes an effort, but I studied it for four years in college and I'm like, no way it's, that's going to go to waste. You know, that's amazing. My stepmother used to live in Japan. She's passed away, but I never got the chance to take it up and even go to Japan. I have never visited. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So I know a couple of years ago, you almost retired. I'm so happy you decided against it, especially the world needs more martial artists like you who I think really live and manifest principles of martial arts. Thank um, you. I'm, I'm so glad you changed your mind. <laughs> Aside from your fun personality and your fun socks. Yes, fun socks. <laughs> how, many, how many, I know you have quite a collection. How many uh, do you know? How many pairs of socks you have? No, I cannot reveal this number because every year, about every year, I have like a contest where I like gather them and I make them a big pile and I ask the fans like, guess how many socks I have and the winner gets something, like an autograph. So I can't uh, tell you. There, there, goes my, there goes my chance. There goes <laughs> my chance. 
Uh, so aside from your well, well, all right. Well, like two years ago, I think I had like 250. Holy. I know, but I got rid of a bunch. I mean, there's no use having them if I don't wear them and they don't fit my feet. I've gotten a few like that, but something like that, like it's probably less than that, just to give you a rough estimate. <laughs> That, wow, that, that just blew my mind. You probably have a whole... Because fans keep sending me them, you know? It's great. <laughs> no, nice. I have to keep, keep that in mind. Um, I love the banter between you and your opponent, Danielle Kelly. The, um, do, you, do you actually know each other? No, I don't. I have no idea who she is. Um, I just heard that she was really good. Like I told one of my coaches, I'm fighting Danielle Kelly. He's like, oh, I know her. She knows leg locks. I was like, oh, right. Well, then teach you the ways. Um, I looked her up, you know, um, she's got a lot of stuff online. And, um, you know, I always try to do something fun. I really can't smack talk. I never have any, any animosity, but I'm always looking for some way to promote the fight. I was like, man, how am I going to promote this, this match, you know? Um, I was thinking about it. I think for Andrea Lee, I did like a, a joke with, with a comedian, my friend Jamie Kilstein. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you might have seen that, like trying to talk smack and failing miserably because I can't say mean things. Um, I just got these rainbow unicorn spats from Mirkatsu. You know, he put out a bunch of new clothes. He's kind of like my sponsor. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Maybe I'll like taunt her with my new pretty spats. So I, I did that video. And then now she, she got into it too. Like, I wonder if she's ever had anybody like smack talk her before. Not if you can even call it smack talking, but she like tagged me the other day in a thing that said like, Roxanne coming at you with Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Hashtag corny like i am pretty corny so that works bring it on girl let's go that's why i ask if you actually know each other because the way she responded it's like you actually know each other no yeah it, it, it's it's working out so far i i, I love i love her and i love you <laughs> and, and jamie kilstein i i listen to his podcast both of them oh, cool. regularly yeah nice. that's, that's that's awesome um without revealing details do you have a game plan for this match do you actually do you do you game plan just, just, just grappling. No, but I am now like my, one of my coaches got all excited and watched a bunch of her videos and, you know, guns actually, his name is guns Gunderson at the gym. He's like really helping me prepare. Um, and, uh, my friend and former jujitsu coach Casey Milliken also, um, they're helping me prepare and I've never like had to research a jujitsu opponent, always MMA. So this is kind of exciting. Like I really, I'm really excited about this, you know, like M MMA feels different than jujitsu and excuse me, you know, I feel like a nervous excited for MMA, but like a happy, like, oh, I'm excited for jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite thing. So I'm, I can't wait. I, I, I can feel it. I can see it. So when, so before this, when was your last grappling super fight? I was supposed to do submission underground in May or April. And then I ended up backing out because of COVID, you know, just a pandemic is a little of course. big deal. Oh, no big um, deal. Right. Uh, so before that, Oh, I want, I, I fought in the IBJJF master worlds tournament in the Gi in Brown belt. And I won. When was I that? won first place. It was last August, I think. Holy moly. Just this year. No, it was last year. Last August. Oh, last year. Wow. So I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019. I and then that was August. And then I got promoted to Black Belt in February of this year. Well, you need to update some of your pages because it still says you're a brown belt. Okay. <laughs> no, not your blog. I, I, I follow your blog. Wikipedia? Wikipedia, I think, yeah. Oh, okay. And Come on, my fans are dropping the ball on me here. Right? <laughs> right I'm going to do something about that. Now they're on blast now. Congratulations, Professor. Thank you. It's official title now. It's official. So aside, from, so after this, are you planning to do more? I know your next fight in the UFC is in January. Are yeah, I think, I think I got approved for a submission underground bout in December. Stay tuned. We're not sure, I think. Um, you know, I don't know. I, my fight's booked. I think you have to be with out of six weeks before your fight in order to get another fight, you know, legally under the rules of UFC rules. I think I'm at, I'm that matches before six weeks. Um, you know, just calculating the risks and all, of course it's yeah. a risk, but I mean, you only live once, right. You know, and I, yeah, YOLO. <laughs> and yeah, just, I'm just probably going to do it. You know, um, it's exciting. I love jujitsu. So do you already have an opponent for that one? Maybe. 
Oh, okay, okay. Secret. All right. Going to focus on Danielle Kelly first and foremost. Right. Yeah. Don't look fast. Yes. That's that's a that's a that's a good good plan. Um, oh. So aside from grappling super fights, what are your long term plans? MMA wise, life, starting a school or something. I don't know. Um, not start a school. That's really hard. A lot of schools fail. I want to teach at somebody else's school. So right now I'm really happy at Syndicate. I'm leading the kids jujitsu program, nice. um, focusing on the little kids, and then Coach Rick is kind of the head of the big kids program. So we're co-running it. Uh, that's so cool. Um, thank you, John Wood, for giving me that position. Um, uh, I want to keep winning my MMA fights, you know, until I can't fight anymore. You know, um, I feel like I'm getting stronger. Thanks, Lorenzo, for the conditioning. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that's cool. And that's a good point about running a school. Yeah, it is the business side, especially. I was supposed to start a nonprofit, but this that was before the pandemic. And then this pandemic hit. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe. Right. <laughs> so aside from your fight in January and possibly submission underground, what's coming up for you that you are most excited about? Um, that's, you know, what's on my horizon. Um, I might try to visit my parents for Christmas, depending on, you know, um, how the pandemic is, if I still have antibodies, you know, all right. the craziness with that. Um, I just visited my dad recently. It was really great. Um, just focus on the matches, you know, that's pretty much my life. And where are they? Like in, the, in Wilmington, Delaware? Where's what? Are the, your parents? Wilmington? Um, as a top secret. You okay, okay. No. The <laughs> secret location of my parental <laughs> units. Yes, that, that's, yes, that's a good point. Obviously, it's a, it's a big city, but yes. <laughs> so where is home nowadays? You mentioned Syndicate MMA. Is that like your home base? My cute little apartment in Vegas is my home base. Vegas, wow. I have friends there who just moved there. She left her in high-paying engineering job to become an adv adventure guide there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Um, what aside from Naruto and Goku, um, well, I don't know if this is gonna be a secret. Are you gonna, are you gonna dress up or something for the way in for this? Um, you know what? Mm, hang on a second. Don't move. Yes. <laughs> this is my mascot for this fight. I feel like I need to do something unicorny because just, that's like the theme ever since I started that, right? I also have unicorn, a unicorn shirt, which I debuted today in like a funny Instagram video. So I wonder if I can get a mask. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm thinking now, I don't know. Something like that along the unicorn lines, I think I gotta do. Nice, nice. Um, anything, um, anything you wanna say, uh, thank or call out or? <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think there's a theme for this uh, grappling event, like a breast cancer awareness yes. theme, right? And some of the proceeds are donated. Like, how do, do you know the details? Yes, the Rose Houston is a nonprofit. They sponsor uh, women who can't afford like mammograms and other medical yeah. procedures. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, I have actually a lot of breast cancer in my family. So um, that's an awesome cause. So thank you so much for doing that, you guys, whoever is involved in organizing that. And I'm very honored to be part of it. That's amazing. How did they reach out to you? Did they, did um, Submission Hunter Pro reach out or The Rose or how did this um, come to fruition? Your manager? It twinkled, twinkled down from the <laughs> heavens and the sky into my... Hey. hey. You're asking all these like top secret questions, man. I can't like always answer. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. No. Well, speaking of twinkles, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are visible in the sky. So I'm sure those planets Ooh. aligned and made it happen. <laughs> cool. Right? I'm going to have to watch that video that you just posted about the unicorn shirt. Okay. It's on my Instagram, Roxy Fighter. Feel free to follow me, Roxy Fighter, also on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And I'm that on was... Taki and Cameo if you want a personalized video. Just had to put that out there. <laughs> uh, yes. A cameo. Nice, nice. I was, that was my next question. How can people follow you online? But you already did. Roxy Fighter. Thank you so much for your time. I really sincerely appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks Don't for the chat. Don't worry, Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara.
Sayonara. Bye-bye.